So this is my 1978 Honda XL250 motorcycle that I've had since 1982. It's been a great machine all along. I did put a set of rings in it a few years ago. It's got about 75,000 kilometers on it. Never actually had a full rebuild, but now the timing chain is getting quite noisy. I had to take the side cover off to fix a part of the ratchet on the shifter mechanism so it would keep clicking and shifting. That just was a loose screw. So now I bought a timing chain. I've already checked the timing chain adjuster things, those plastic things that the timing chain rubs on. They're not chunky or broken. This thing was a rip-off price for $81.99. Side cover is ready to remove. And I've got a new side cover gasket. Of course you can do this with the engine installed. I just have to take off the gas tank and the cam cover or rocker cover. Let's get her done. Tanks off. Now remove the upper motor mount plates which I've already unbolted and ready to take off all these bolts. Now that all the bolts are off, got the coil thing moved out of the way. I did pre-pressure wash it so while I was taking this stuff, stuff off, dirt wouldn't fall off the frame and land in here. We're ready to move any, remove everything. And it doesn't even matter where your engine's set, TDC, BDC, it can be set anywhere. Now this engine was still in running condition so the timing marks are still factory set. So if you want to rotate your engine precisely to set it at TDC before you change your timing chain, here's the easy way to do it. Many engines have a cover here to put a nut on the flywheel. There's a nut on the flywheel to put a socket on and just put a ratchet. And then there's this hole. Then that hole is the outside edge of the flywheel and there's two lines on it. One says T and one says F. F means fire. That line is advanced before top dead center because engines fire before top dead center. And the T mark means the timing mark. That's when the piston is at top dead center. So that's the important one you want to set up to the little V it lines up to. We'll do that in a moment. Like I said, I've already checked and the plastic timing chain adjuster or slide is in great shape. There's the two adjustment screws. The way this one works is when you loosen the two screws by its own spring tension it sucks itself shorter and that makes it bulge out more. Well it sucked itself as short as it can be and it won't bulge out anymore. And the chain is still very loose and slapping the inside of the cylinder chamber. If you drive like that too long, if it doesn't flip the chain, it actually usually rubs a hole in the front side of your cylinder chamber then all your oil starts leaking out unless you can make some sort of redneck patch you can't drive your bike anymore at least too much oil here's a better view of how loose it is even though the tensioner which is this is the bottom of is sent to move fully over that way there's still so much slack even if you could move it over more it would just cause the chain to rub and cut a deeper trench where it's already rubbing Luckily, this slider is in good condition when it wears through. That's the one that wears through your cylinder. Well, now I'm working on a gravel area, so I've set down a clean rag. So when I take stuff apart, if anything falls, I won't contaminate it and I can find it easy. This part is the magnetic head that rotates. It's got mechanical advance built into it. And there's the pickup reader there that sends a trigger signal to the CDI box, the capacitor discharge ignition box. So on the other side the magneto makes the energy and this triggers the transistor in there exactly when to fire and advances it to in the motor revs. So I'm going to take off this nut and see if I can remove that main drive gear so I can slip the chain off. I've never done one on this kind of bike before so I'll either try it the professional way, and if it doesn't work, I'll show you a sneaky redneck method, which is really easy, but you got to do it right or you'll screw your engine up. Of course, this has a notch in it, so it only goes on one way. Now, the main drive gear isn't a timing gear or anything like that, so it's just got lots of splines, and it can go on any old way when you put it back together. Now we have pretty good access to that chain. 
examine your lower sprocket for wear. This one looks good. And as far as I can see, the upper one looks good too. So I didn't have to buy everything. I'm cheap, you know. The next step is to loosen both of these timing chain adjustment bolts. I'll do that now. Just a couple turns. Then you get something long and skinny, like a flat screwdriver, and decide whether you want to use the top or the bottom to pry on that adjuster and squish it over, which will then cause it to raise up. Once you've got it all jammed over and raised up in the chain in the loosest position, then you retighten those two nuts and it holds it out of the way for you. Well, in this application, one screwdriver shoved up the bottom against it and one shoved in the top against it did the best job and I've already got those two nuts tightened so now I can release them. There, and that thing raised up actually about a centimeter. Now you want to loosen your two upper timing chain nuts. So it would be best to rotate the engine till the nut is just above this flat side because then when you put the socket on it and twist it, it's not going to twist the whole thing around. It's going to use this as a leveling base and just undo the bolt. So I've got my ratchet on the flywheel and I'm rotating this. There's a good spot to stop. So now when I put my socket on and twist it, it'll hit here and stop everything from turning. Like so. <clears throat> now rotate it again and just barely loosen the other one free. Perfect. If you notice, the sprocket has air spaces on both sides. That's so that when you want to put your timing chain back on and set it to the right position, you know, TDC or whatever, you can drop it down a little bit and it'll drop down about a centimeter. Then the chain's loose and you can just pick it up and slip it over the sprocket and put it on wherever you need to do it. I'll show you that in a moment. Now on this motor, TDC compression has got the one bolt facing upwards and to know the position on your cam in case everything got messed up one cam lobe is pointing that direction on the way down and the other cam lobe is pointing that direction on the way down the last thing you want is have your cam lobes pointing upwards that's wrong and when you reassemble your motor and put the cover back on you want to have it in this position too both cam lobes pointing down other side if you look through this little tiny hole I don't know if you can see it, but there's two little marks in there. And the one says T and the other one's a line. And I've lined up the line to the arrow. And there you can more easily see where those cam lobes are pointing down. So now remove this nut, which I've already loosened. Got the other one out already. We can drop all that loose. You can see it's jumping around there. That don't matter. And we'll remove the camshaft. In the sprocket, we're important to get enough slack to get the camshaft out. Inspect it. Well, this one's not perfect. It's got a couple pits, but it'll do. It's an old bike. Now the one tricky part. For some reason, there's a pin here. That'll be the only thing preventing me from pulling the chain right out now. Luckily, nothing actually held that pin in, so I can slip it right out. Perfect. So I've just slipped off the upper timing gear with my fingers, let the chain drop out through the bottom, and there she be. Sweet. Now I'll tell you about the sneaky redneck method I've even used on cars with tricky timing chains so I don't even have to take the front of the motor apart, pull these off or nothing. It's really nasty but it works perfect if you're good with a MIG welder.